stories galore this morning on the Jam Pack Sunday footy show. No one's job safe at Melbourne from president to coach. Peter Jackson's revealing interview with Damien Barrett this morning on the program. The Kangaroos bouncing after a hard-fought win with Majak Daw the talk of the town. Coach Brad Scott joins us live in the studio. The Hawks saw exacting revenge for a grand final misery against the Swans. Boom recruit Brian Lakes here too with the panel. While the Swans Premiership star Ted Richards drops by to tell his story for a Sunday yarn. Against all odds, the Fremantle Dockers win while the Pies lick their wounds, the Cats stamp their authority and the Tigers back in town. Sit back, relax and join the journey on a massive Sunday footy show. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all the mums out there. A massive program this morning. Stories galore, as you saw there, off the top. Let's get into it right off the bat. Bill Brownless is here, the Geelong champion, along for the journey. Yep. Shane Crawford, the Brownlow medalist. Lordo is here, Matthew Lord. He's got plenty to get off his chest. Nathan Brown doing it beautifully and makes his debut in the handball later on. Ooh. And Damien Barrett, the number one football journalist in the land. The results as it stands into this round of football... <laughs> So far. There we go. The Cats on Friday night. The Tigers had a win. West, West Coast had a win over the Brisbane Lions, North Melbourne. Fremantle in a loss that Collingwood really have hurt from. And the Hawks were far too classy for the Sydney Swans last night. There's games to go today. But the ladder as it stands yes! at the moment. The Cats are on top, <laughs> William. From the Bombers, the Hawks, Port, Sydney, Fremantle, Richmond re-emerge. And Collingwood have got their woes. And they'll feature pretty heavily shortly. Carlton, West Coast. And North Melbourne looked the more probable outside the eight. And then the remaining 11, probably including Adelaide, have got the job ahead of them. Let's start with the Demons, though, straight off the bat. Peter Jackson, six days into the job, Damon, is the new chief executive. And he's announced himself pretty emphatically that he has his own vision for the club. Yeah, he's an old-fashioned straight shooter, Hutchie, as you well know. And he has told staff uh, late last week that there will be changes. And effectively, no one at that footy club's job is safe. And that will potentially include Mark Neal, the coach. He's contracted into 2014, and that's where it sits at the moment. I know I can't stop people speculating, but from my perspective, it's a question of uh, you know, how the footy department is operating as a whole and, and how the players are developing and whether they want to play for this footy club. You just said then that Mark Neal is contracted until the end of 2014. Will he actually be at the club until the end of 2014? When he came into this club, it's just been one massive external factor after another. And on top of that, we've got a ex very inexperienced playing list. I think we have to give everyone the chance, whether it's Mark Neal or whoever it is in the footy department, to give them some clean air, if you like, to uh, show what they've got. I just don't believe anyone. I mean, they're all being very brave, Damien. I talked to them all, and they're all being very brave about how all this stuff, this external forces hasn't affected them, that they're resilient. I just don't necessarily believe them uh, because they're human beings. So you haven't guaranteed Mark Neal will be at this footy club at the start of next season? I haven't guaranteed anyone will be at this footy club um, for the duration because we've got to look at how this footy club is structured. Um, as soon as I mention the word changes, which I've done internally, um, you can't, can't guarantee anyone anything. Peter Jackson there, the AFL endorsed CEO of Melbourne, at least for six months. I get the feeling it's going to be a longer posting for that. He knows the job in front of him is, is one that's going to take him a whole lot longer than that to fix. Really. Lordy, you know him from his time at Essendon, where he was a very successful administrator of that footy club. You saw what he just said there. there. He, he was not in any way going to guarantee anyone, particularly Mark Neal, that they would be there under their contract. No, he's a straight shooter, as you said. I spent uh, close to uh, you know, 12 or 13 years with uh, Peter Jackson and Essen. He ended the reign of Kevin Sheedy. So he's not afraid of making hard decisions. And listening to that, Mark Neal and all the uh, football department are currently on notice. He's watching every move they make and he will make whatever change he needs to at the end of the year. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it all in full later on because it's the only revealing interview he's done this week. But he's put everyone on notice. Everyone's on notice here. Even the president and... Yep. And he's admitted that no one respects his footy club, which is an extraordinary revelation. Yeah, he said members and, and fans are holding back and wanting a reason to rejoin or re-support the footy club. And he acknowledges that. There's going to be a, a loss of more than $1 million. He will reveal that later on, that there's changes in the footy department. One other thing, guys. Um, they're caught up, as we know now, Melbourne, in the Asada investigation. And Peter Jackson wasn't there at the time. The angst and the anger started between the club and the AFL. And just listen to his answer here, just to give an insight as to why the AFL is now so angry over this experience exchange of detail that the club has given the AFL over Dr Dan Bates' involvement with Stephen Dank, the sports scientist. 
I think we were a little bit, perhaps a little bit naive in, in, in what we should have and could have disclosed at a meeting in February with the AFL. Now, why, I don't know. Um, in terms of how we do business, um, I might have done a little bit differently. Yeah, it oh. seems to be a reference to the, the former CEO, uh, Cameron Schwab. It's a backhander, isn't it? It, it is. seems to be, Hutch. Yeah. He wouldn't mm. mention Cameron Schwab by name, and that's uh, in respect to what Cameron Schwab did. But clearly, with uh, Peter Jackson now in that chair, for, for as of May 1, there's going to be changes, and they're going to come pretty soon, I would have thought. And how long is he in that chair? Is he staying six, six months, months, he said. And, that, and but he, it, gave, no, he, he wouldn't commit no. to leaving after six months, wouldn't right. commit to staying longer either. But I've got the feeling that... that what he knows has to be done at that footy club is going to take a lot longer than six months, even if it all goes really well from, uh, from day one. He addresses the captaincy issue too. It's riveting television. Watch it a little bit later on in the Sunday footy show this morning. Collingwood have got worries, no doubt about it. They're four and three. Nathan Buckley's put it on the agenda that he's worried whether his team's even a good team or not. They didn't come to play last night and they were bitterly disappoint, uh, disappointing. They got smashed in the first quarter. The game was over at quarter time and the question marks on Collingwood at the moment is there, they rely on... If Cloak, Pendlebury and Swan don't mm. do the job. Yep. We always saw them as a really solid team and they all just played their roles. Well, at the moment, if those three players don't fire, Collingwood don't win and their depth is really looks, looks poor at the moment. Their third Why are they leaking good? goals? Well, I think they can't handle the small, the small forwards. So another one, we'll look at Michael Walters in a, in a minute. But we spoke about it, Brownie, two weeks ago, the cheating. Well, they, last week they just got across the line against St Kilda because they're more talented than St Kilda. But Frio were just decimated last night. But against a team who's disciplined like Fremantle Dockers are, He's... they exposed them. There's Marty Clark, who was opposed to Walters early. You've got Heath Shaw and Harry O'Brien and those players who like to attack. Here's but, Walters uh, here. Yeah, week after week, whether it's been Rioli, whether it's been Yaron, whether it's been Walters, it's right across the board, though, Brown. I won't just blame the it's small defenders. It's bigger than that, though, isn't it? It, it is. Well, it because is. their midfield can't defend either. No, their tonight. midfield doesn't defend. They've got no depth. And the way they go to Travis Cloak, he got triple team last night up against Luke McFarlane, who would just yeah, about yeah. beat Cloak anyway. Yeah. They just are relying on too few. Lordy, it says a lot about Freeman, a lot mm. about Ross Lyon. They were decimated by yeah. injury. This man is a genius. He is. He is a, the best coach, I think, that's never won a premiership in the history of the game. So I think it'll be unjust if this guy... He came close. He did. He, <laughs> but if he doesn't go on and win one, and I think if he gets a bit of luck, we've got Hill, Sandy Lance, five, Pavlich, four players who you could say could be in the best 20 players mm. in the game. And now Griffin, Griffin who's as not well. far off that category so, as well. And to yep. be in the position they're in, what's so a five and two? Uh, five here it is here. Two. Have a look at John Griffin here, just going for a uh, yeah. ruck throw in. That looks like a really serious knee injury. So he joins Sandlin. Zach Clark's also injured. Kepler Bradley. Mm. So all the big men actually uh, will have a look at Zach Dawson in a minute, who went into the ruck and, believe it or not, was OK. He mm. won a few clearances and was pretty good, Zach. Yeah, that was one of Ross's moves at uh, three-quarter time. He just didn't go and speak to his players. The third quarter, Swan turned it round for Collingwood. Six goals to one, Collingwood's way. He didn't go and spray his players. He thought, what will I do here? How can I change the team around? He moved uh, Zach Dawson into the ruck. <laughs> he just threw the magnet board everywhere. He, he moved uh, younger players into the midfield just for something different. And uh, you know, things turn around. He just competes, the Zach. And uh, the yeah. thing about him is he lacks a bit of polish, but he has a real crack. And he's prepared to use his body and follow up. And I reckon he uh, did a pretty good job. And there's an alarming thing in that game for me for Melbourne. Can someone explain to me how Jack Hanna slipped through the Melbourne system? Oh. As the, he went into the ruck and played an admirable role well, in the game. And did Lordy the whole pre-season, Lord Otis, at uh, Melbourne. Yeah, he uh, did the whole pre-season at Melbourne, but they didn't leave a pre-season draft selection for him. So Freeman will come under their nose and well, took him with that selection. So they've taken you know, the Burns and the Pedersons mm. and these guys and they've eaten up their spots yeah. on this. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so they, didn't, they were expecting that Hanath would go through to the rookie draft. And he didn't make it there because there was other clubs who were uh, watching well, him as well. That's unbelievable. It, it was just a mistake. And uh, they, he was training at Melbourne. They call mm. him in and they say, uh, congratulations, you're off the free medal. So just he packed mistake. his bags and went uh, all the yeah. way across the nullarbor. A big mistake, uh, Shane. Well, very big mistake. Yeah. A good big ruck. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a Hawthorne side that is going as well as anybody and as well as Geelong. Geelong are on top of the ladder. But last night, I Ooh. thought Hawthorne made a real statement. Ruffin was terrific. Franklin kicked through the first five goals. Hodge, the skipper, he was terrific. Gibson and Brian Lake teamed really well together. We've got Brian Lake coming in. But it was just their cleanness. I thought their uncontested footy, Sydney actually rank second in how many uncontested possessions they can see. Now, Hawthorne smashed them in this area last night. And it wasn't because Sydney wasn't putting pressure on it. It was just Hawthorne was so good. Their foot skills and the way they retained the footy, they just didn't give it back to Sydney. And the Hawks, I tell you what, they're in the top two in the competition right now.
Well, the Tigers are back. I'll tell you what, they uh, were brilliant over at Amy Stadium against Port Adelaide. They really came to play. They attacked it hard. They worked together. No cochin, so there was a bit of doubt. A lot of people picking Port Adelaide. Who was who was uh, captain? Brett Deledio, and he led from the front. He was brilliant after copping it last week uh, from Nath Brown. He was just he, he was sectional. Oh, he had 32 possessions. Yeah. He really just, uh, right from the start of the match, the first couple of minutes, he had plenty of the footy. He really showed the way. Harry. Well, and he, for me, he, he was clearly best of field. Harry boy. What he did was he validated the fact that Nathan Brown was wrong last week. It was too hard on him. Oh. And yeah. that is a backhander in, in the only way you can... was wrong? You've gone out on offence against the guys that had a really good year, gave him a whack. I was doing my job. And he's, he's dirty up about it, and probably right. so. He didn't so. dirty up and play best on ground because of me yesterday. Me and Brett Deledio, <laughs> mates, he played well yesterday because he's a good player. He, Damien Let's Harvick referenced you in the press comments after the well, game. Damien Harvick's doing his job as a coach. Brett Deledio's doing his job as a player. I'm doing my job as a media commentator. You just go a bit early on him in your criticism? Maybe. All I said was I had to give votes for worst on ground for Triple M. I gave them. Oh, and God. you have to have over 50 games Very experience. Hard, so... Lid's got them. He took it on board. He didn't play well because of me yesterday. He played well because he's a good player. Well, he was captain of the footy club yesterday and he played a good game. Both his coach and Brett Deledio made reference of it in the aftermatch press conference. Oh, listen, I think he, he's probably only below par game probably would have been last week. You know, the week previous he copped a bit of flack, but he, he played on David Mundy and cut him down to 13 possessions. So, you know, the, the easiest job in the world is to be a critic. I suppose you just develop a thick skin, but you've got to be careful not to, uh, to bite back <coughs> because... I think that's what they're looking for. Oh, look, I've had terrific support from uh, from Dimmer, um, and you know, and internally from you know the playing group and, and assistant coaches. Um, my family's been great support. Um, yeah, look, they they all just you know I worry about what they think of me and not what the outside world does, and you can only uh, go from that, I suppose. <laughs> okay, I'll take I'll take the route. Well, it was pretty full on. That was a catalyst for him playing well yesterday. <laughs> there you go. And oh. actually, uh, I went over to that match, uh, Hutchie, for <laughs> AFL Live uh, with Rex Hunt. Great radio station. And uh, coming back with the Tiger boys on the plane, Ooh. and that was all the talk. <laughs> what is Nathan Brown going to say about that performance? Mm. And I said to Brett Deledio, you'll probably figure in the votes. And as soon as I said that, he said, uh, tell Brownie that I'm back. <laughs> back in form. It was it all because of him. Terrific win by the Tigers. We'll look at it later. This... Lord, I didn't like in the game. Now, this is Shane Tucker. He comes back on the ground after an injury. Stinger. And so he goes off the ground injured. And then he comes back on and Jack Redden. So he goes off the ground. You yeah. can see he's clearly distressed. One minute after being back on, watch this. Redden gets him and doesn't play any further role. Now, that is not dissimilar, you want to isolate it, to what happened to Nick Reeves. So what's wrong with it, Hutch? No, don't come back on the ground. What's wrong with well, it? Well, there is a clear mandate from the AFL that you're not He's to... In trouble. Not to oh, attack and you shouldn't come back on injured, oh, you can't. You can't be right. You, can't. you hit him in the other shoulder anyway, I think. A red in there. But well, uh, I think yeah, he shouldn't have come back. He, but he targeted him, didn't he? He did yeah. target him. He did target oh, him. It's but, a big um, boy sport. Yeah. Why did they yeah, put him back on? That, Brownie. But when, you... when you can say there's an ex-player, but the AFL stated mm. publicly last year that sort of act is going to be scrutinised. Yeah. But why, why you're not allowed to on a footy field. So that's what you're saying with that. If he's deliberately, if great he's deliberately he wanted to come back out on the field, he's in real trouble. Isn't it more of It's just the real crawl. So no one's allowed to tackle him for the rest of the game. That's what you're saying. Very no, good point, Joe. Oh, well, well, he would hurt himself ball, more if you tackled know. him. Well, it's more if you're in the hands of the trainers, mm. don't go near them. But if yeah. it's just in general play like it was, mm. that you can give him a bump. Don't shoot the message. I'm just raising what the AFL's raised. Was it in general play? What was it in general play? Will be the question. Like it was a set shot for goal, and he targeted his injury. I reckon the AFL level look at it during the week. Someone else who's also in targets is Michael Voss, the Brisbane Lions coach. He and his team are going through the toughest eight-week sequence known in the AFL this season. Andrew Hamilton, very respected journalist at the Courier Mail, said on Friday morning that or Saturday morning's papers that. Voss would have his future determined within those eight weeks and the board was prepared to make a call on him at the end of it. It's a really tough stretch of matches, guys. The, the club, strangely enough, sent out a press release just before the game started to say that is not the case. I say strange because it's it's different sort of PR bill just before a game starts to yeah, refute something exactly. in the paper. But look, let's take a look at, uh, at what Michael Voss did say about that uh, scenario that does have him under all sorts of pressure. I'm not here to save my job. I'm here to do my job. It's just that simple for me. So, you know, so when we sort of talk about what our next target is, our next target is we shift to Essendon. And that's all I'm worried about. And I'm all worried about being able to coach our players to be able to get back to where we think we need to be uh, and replicate that sort of form ongoing. Um, so I, I don't cast my mind any further, further, further than that, really.
Further than that, Vossy, that's all it is. Uh, big game this week for Michael Voss. North Melbourne <laughs> were very, very good last night. 54-point win. Kicked nine goals in the last quarter. But it's all about this man here. Magic! A boy from Sedan who came to Australia, had no idea about Aussie rules. And have a look at him. He's the poster Boring boy car. of the <laughs> AFL now. He uh, took eight marks. Kicked six goals for, he was outstanding and uh, gives him a really, really good target up forward. Played deep forward most of the night. And can he jump? He went for, so he's going to take mark of the year at, at some stage here. Very, very good. And the uh, big thing there is, he's going to get better. And his fourth game of footy, he is going to get better. Brad Scott will join us and we'll talk more about Magic through the course of the program. One each before the break, boys. Bill? Oh, have a look at this, Jared Ruffhead, who was very, very good last night, but he, he's got a superstition. Not allowed to touch the banner. Don't touch it. Look out. Oh, just got under the banner. Come on, Ruff. Look at this. He's a, a lot of superstitions with footballers. Not allowed to touch it. He comes out last. There's a bit there. Look out. Look out. Oh, he got away with it. But that, that's, geez, they got some superstitions, footballers. It's tough to back that one up, Bill. But so what about this old codger at the footy yesterday? Yeah, he's, uh, look at him at the back there. He's turned up to watch the Brisbane line. <laughs> he's realised he's at the wrong ground, so he thought, just box on, boys, go for it. Uh, he, watch him, he's swinging uppercuts. <laughs> <laughs> front, <laughs> right hooks, Very good. sandwiches. <laughs> there he is, look at him. Oh, look at him, he's getting in the watch. He's had a bad... Oh, he's he come to the wrong beers. place. This lady oh. comes down and does breaststroke. You watch her, have a look at this. Look, what's she doing? He's saying split it up. He's saying just keep going for Where's it, Where's Jonathan Brown now? A really nice touch in the Frio match after they had a victory against Collingwood. They gave all the women in the audience, or in the crowd, mothers. flowers. Yeah, the beautiful mothers. So, oh, no. well done. Oh. Very nice touch. Oh. Fremantle Footy Club. Uh, a head and shoulders above the other clubs in What happened if they thought. lost? Were they going to do that? Well, I'm sure they would have anyway. But uh, they were switched on. They were ready for this match and a very good win. Tell you what, Gibbo stopped everything that came his way last night, except one. <laughs> Have a look at this bounce here. He's got it covered. He's got it. Oh, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh Gibbo. <laughs> Gibbo. Just a shocking bounce here. He's got this covered easily. Bounces yes. over his head. Misses it. Hits the post. You're uh, oh. singing about what he was going to wear that yeah. Yeah, he was. He should have his glasses on with the no lenses. <laughs> and then the coin toss before the game. There's some funny coin tosses this year. So oh, oh. I'm not sure what to make of this. This is this is apparently art. Wall like uh, I'm an not Egyptian. really sure what that is. And I don't think Brian Lake knows what it is either. Have a look at him. <laughs> <laughs> He's a double take, doesn't he? Have a look. He was a bit off put for the first five minutes, Lake. He didn't know what to think of this. Have a look at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not expecting that on a match. Yeah. Uh, uh, fascinating different. stuff. Plenty more to come. Brad Scott to join us next. Ted Richards will be along too. A jam-packed show ahead. And don't forget Peter Jackson later on in the program with his vision for Melbourne. This is your Sunday football destination. This is The Sunday Footy Show. <laughs> You're with the Sunday Footy Show on the Nine Network on this special Mother's Day edition. Big win by the Kangaroos last night. They looked the real deal again, Bill. Yep. An emphatic second half by the Roos and one big story out of the game. It certainly was. Mad Jack. Uh, nine goal last quarter there. Really helped uh, North Melbourne. Good win there. Drew Petrie's uh, just uh, played his role again. Lindsay Thomas, the leading goal kicker in the comp with a couple. Zeeble, very good. Gibson just go, flies under the radar. Keeps getting it. Jean Syracuse. Uh, Markovic. There was one that, uh, I don't know if Brad Scott had uh, playing up forward and kicking three goals. Uh, the super coach uh, uh, points there. Griffin, very, very good. Will Minson continues his good year. Goldstein, very good. Kicked a couple of goals. Majak and Boomer Harvey was back in town. And great pleasure to welcome the North Melbourne coach, Bradley Scott, to uh, the Sunday footy show. Scotty? Thanks, Phil. Good uh, to be here. Hey, good on you, mate. Thanks for coming in. But it was all about Majak yesterday. Uh, I don't know how you go with the individual players, but he was great. Uh, his fourth game, played deep forward, eight marks, led... Did it all and kicked six goals, four. He could have easily kicked eight. Yeah, he could. I mean, ten shots a goal. Um, I don't think he's done that at any level of footy mm. in, in the past. So that was fantastic for him. But, um, look, we had a real focus pre-game of, of making sure that we, we shared the load, not only in the forward line, but through the midfield. You know, we've been a team that in the past has probably relied on Swallow, Harvey, Wells, you know, and Petrie. And Drew did a great job of, of isolating Majak and Madge did the rest. Why has he been able to step up the AFL? Like the first game he took it apart in 18 minutes, came off. Some players when they play reserve footy, they kill it, they come in, they can't do it at senior level. But he seems to be the opposite. He didn't play huge footy down there. Like you said, he hasn't kicked six goals before, but yeah. looks a natural on the big stage. Yeah, I think the things that, he, that he's really good at, um, you know, it's actually easier to come in and play it at AFL level because the delivery's better. Um, we play on better grounds, better conditions. You know, so we, 
his hands are really good. He's obviously very quick and, and very mobile. So when he gets that better delivery, I think it definitely helps him. But, you know, we've been really patient with him and he's still got a hell of a lot to learn. Um, the comparisons between Majak and Nat Nui are, are premature, to say the least. Um, but, you know, he's progressing really well. Uh, a game you expected to win. So you've got to win these games now at North Melbourne because you are a very good side. Is, that how, is there a bit of pressure on you there to win and win well these games now? I think there's pressure on... on you every week. I mean, we, we've played some good opposition uh, this year. We feel at our best we can certainly take them on. But, you know, we looked at the Bulldogs side and, you know, they're, they're a, a youthful side, but they had more experience on the ground than we did yesterday. Mm. I mean, we're, we're a younger, more inexperienced side than that Bulldogs team yesterday. So there's a lot of development still, still to go for our guys, but, you know, we demand performance from our young players and they delivered yesterday. Spanner in the works there with Markovic, who was, uh, he, I think he got beaten by a couple of North boys and they sent him forward and he kicked two, or he ended up kicking three goals. Yeah, he did. He, um, he you know, we made a couple of defensive errors and, and, and he was able to get on the end of it. Um, one from a kick in, one from a, a fall of the ball situation. But, um, yeah, I, I thought it was a good move by Brendan McCartney shifting Austin back because Majak looked dangerous and yeah. Petrie looked dangerous and... To make that shift and have your defender kick three goals is very handy. <laughs> Brad, it was a massive last quarter for you. You kicked nine goals to their four. Where did that come from? Did something change within the game or did you, did you do something better than, than you did the previous three quarters? Look, the Bulldogs, while they, they haven't put uh, a whole number of wins together this year, they still sit you know, in the top four in the competition in clearances and contested ball. So, you know, we, we really wanted a, a really tight, in-close battle in there. And, and to be plus 20 in the contested ball, I think... Once we got on top in there, we could start to use the ball on the outside a little bit better and the goals flowed from that. It was a big game for North. You had the milestone, uh, milestone games in Spud Ferrito and Scotty Thompson and then Boomer back. Uh, do you do anything differently or is it just a normal game for you, Scotty? No, no, we did. We made a really big focus of it because we think Michael Ferrito in particular playing yeah. 200 games, Scotty Thompson with his 100th. Uh, Michael Ferrito is a quintessential North Melbourne person. You know, he's got a lot of the qualities and values we rate really highly. So we wanted to do the right thing and and, and honour his 200th, mm -hmm. but, you know, the boys... It was also Sam Gibson's first game starting on the ground, believe it or not, so the boys thought that was oh. a fair milestone as well. I didn't actually know that. <laughs> yeah. oh, did you didn't know that? <laughs> and also the president's birthday? Yeah, yeah, so, so yeah. he... Um, as is okay. often the case, he made it all about him. <laughs> <laughs> had a cake. Was that true? Was there a cake in the rooms after the game for him? Yeah, well, we had um, you know, oh. the celebration for the, to present some awards to Michael Frito and Scott Thompson, but JB's birthday cake trumped that. And what oh. was he doing on the training track oh. practising oh. hangers for? <laughs> he, kicked off. Well, he, he was behind the goals at Hobart the week before, <laughs> and one of our guys kicked a, yeah. a goal, and he made a, a, a complete meal of the mark, so he's out doing a little bit of work to try and show he can do it, but <laughs> oh, I don't think he uh, proved anything to anyone. Uh, Brad, massive game Friday night, West Coast Eagles in Perth. Is this, yep. I know it's not, uh, you've lost a few tight ones this year. Are you sort of really stealing yourselves to take a scalp? Oh, look, well, I think it's going to be a great game, a Friday night game. Uh, West Coast are really getting their, their full complement of personnel back. Uh, they're, they look in pretty good form. You know, they're, they're probably not as ominous that, as they have been in the past, but the quality of players they've got, we expect a great contest and you know, that's what we've set this season up for, to play in the big games and play well in them. Aaron Black's developing. Every time I see him, he does something just that little bit better. Where's his best position? Because he looks like he can play a multi multiple roles. Yeah, I think that's his great uh, strength, is his, his versatility. And he's uh, genuinely quick for a 193, 194 centimetre key forward. But you know, we see him as a really important part of our, our key forward structure going forward. And um, we've got some depth in that area now. Uh, Brad, uh, there's always a lot of talk about the subs and you had Daniel Wells starting. What's the mm. thought behind that? Oh, it's pretty simple, Croft. We, Wellsy's had an, an injury interrupted pre-season and you know, he's probably reaching the, the point now where we needed to back him off a little bit. So you know, these days it, come, it came down to a choice really of you know, not playing him at all because um, mm. he was just getting to that level or, or playing him as a sub and um, the sub was a pretty easy <laughs> decision between those two. Did you think Daniel Cross would be uh, Western Bulldogs sub? No, we didn't. No. Well, um, but, um, yeah, I, I think different teams look at it differently. And, and it does create headaches. I mean, we were concerned about when Cross was going to come on because yeah. he's, he's an elite endurance runner. And, you know, when everyone's tired, he covers the ground better than anyone. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting tactic and I think it's going to evolve as time goes on. Brad, you've, had, you've decided to play the three tools a lot with uh, Tarrant, Hanson and obviously Petrie the last year. Yep. With the form of Magic, uh, does Hanson and um, Tarrant, are they capable of playing at centre-half back? At yeah. different stages? Yeah. yeah, they both are. Hanson yeah. had a terrific game at centre half mm. back uh, yesterday. Looked uh, you know, really accomplished back there, beat his man convincingly, and, and, and marked um, coming third up a lot. So, um, 
you know, that's that's the versatility we need. That's what we've been working on for two or three years. So, you know, we do like to play the three talls, but really we, we play one ruckman and, and three talls. So it's identical in structure to other teams in terms of number of talls. Andrew Swallow's injury, you got an update for us? Yeah, the, it looks um, pretty bad. So when you when you look at that hyperextension, yeah. it's, it's always a, a risky action and um, you're concerned about ACL and in, in that case probably you know, lateral ligament, medial ligament as well. Mm. Um, but it's structurally intact. Uh, the, there's no ligament damage uh, that doctors uh, can tell so far. But we'll just check the extent of the bone bruising tomorrow with a, with a scan and, and update everyone then. Uh, good luck. Uh, the votes here, Scotty, for a good win yesterday. Uh, Matt Jack, oh, I loved him. Jackie Zebel, outstanding. Ryan Griffin, very good for the dogs. And Sam Gibson, who... For the first time, started on the ground yesterday. I, I, I knew that deal. Um, so we gave you both for that. Boomer was also very good. The month ahead, the doggies have got the Gold Coast Suns. St Kilda, Port Adelaide and have a bye. North Melbourne, West Coast Eagles, big game. Adelaide, St Kilda, Gold Coast Suns. So get over the Eagles and then Scotty just thinks they might be able to win those three. Mm -hmm. and, and what's Brad won for coming in today? Uh, what, well, he, what he got for him? Well, he gets all the prizes, of yep. course. Uh, the uh, Lou Richards uh, prize yep. book there, the Aquila shoes, which are very, very nice. Ooh. The St. Goliath clothing pack. Oh, look at that, uh, Scotty. It's magnificent. <laughs> the man, what a fuss. You can get the feathers done there. $100 voucher. The King Chrome tools. The Ooh. Oh, uh, pressure washer. You can get them, do the uh, cement outside. And the car. Ready to golf. The uh, extreme cooling towel, cooler sports towel. Well, Waterside Hotel, $100 <laughs> voucher. Home timber and hardware, $100 gift. Voucher. Uh, thanks to Home Timber and Heart, where, where all the tradies go. And for your lovely mother, Lynn, oh. uh, are some flowers there, and I'm sure you'd love to uh, wish her Happy Mother's Day. Oh, fantastic. Happy Mother's Day, Mum. This will be your, about your uh, your fifth bunch of flowers this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fantastic. You've got the box on going as well, too, at the Kangaroos, which we're supporting today for you. Yeah, it's really important. Uh, all, all our members, we've got, we're running a, a box on debt reduction campaign, and you know this is a, a, a a pin that is only $10 and uh, you can log on to our website at, at nmfc.com.au and, and contribute. And it's really important that to grow our football department and to pay our players, we've got to reduce our debt. So a critical component of what we're doing in the, uh, the short term. A great initiative and thanks for coming in and we appreciate it. And happy Mother's Day to your family today. Great. Thanks, Brad Scott joining us. Uh, time now for the Ice Spray Injury Report. <laughs> so we just saw the Android Swallow one, but Taylor Hunt, Friday night. It looks like he might have a crack in his shoulder, Bill. Could yep. be, if he puts a plate in there, might be best case four to six weeks. Hopefully he's back in four because he's been playing some great run with rolls. Here's Chris Knights. Just slipped there as he kicked it. And the old Darren Creswell injury, just the knee pops out. And I'm not sure he's going to have scans. Try and put that, uh, see what, how bad it is. But it looks pretty bad, so we're not sure how many he'll miss there. And then this was a clash of knees. This is a nasty one. This is like the old ruck injury. A really nasty clash of knees. And uh, it looks like a couple of weeks. He come back on. He went off, looked like he was gone, and come back on. Did um, little Cameron Mooney? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, plenty of injuries from the weekend and all the details throughout the course of the week. Brian Lake is in the house. He Ooh. joins us next on the Sunday Footy Show. Yeah. You're with the Sunday footy show, a big statement made by the Hawks last night. Their wonderful form continues, Nathan Brown. And the grand final rematch was one-way traffic. It was a huge statement, and their big men were really good. Roughhead, Hale, Franklin, Gunston kicked three from the wing. Hodge had 32, Mitchell 30, Roughhead 27. McGlynn kicked a couple, Kennedy, O'Keefe, uh, Kennedy had 30. Adam Goods was really good last night, played on the ball most of the night, never stopped trying. But the Hawks, they made a real statement. As we said, Roughhead 126, Hodge 120, Bruce was terrific again. Kennedy, Pike, Goods, Jack and O'Keefe with a super coach, top five. And it's my pleasure to welcome a man who's uh, just playing some really good footy down in the Hawthorne back line with Josh Gibson. Brian Lake, you're really enjoying your time at Hawthorne because I noticed you've got a Hawthorne haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd change it up a little bit. I had dye in, in makeup uh, with her magic uh, this morning uh, to do do. But um, I've had a lot of feedback, I must admit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, your combination with Josh Gibson down there last night was terrific. Sometimes you'd play on someone, he'd be the free man. Other times you're both back. You seem to have a really good cohesion. Yeah, we've got great flexibility uh, down back. And, and with, um, with Gibbo, he, he likes to work up the ground a little bit more and I'll stay probably a, a little bit more deeper than, than usual. So, um, yeah, we, we've been working really well together. Um, probably missing that cup. Uh, we haven't probably been able to spend too much time together to 
to work out that synergy. But uh, yeah, we've obviously with three games together now and another three before the bye. Hopefully, we can work a little bit harder together. You played at a club with extraordinary skills in those uh, uh, preliminary finals of the Dogs, Gilby, Murphy, these guys, but this Hawthorne team, their skill level, I've never seen a better kicking side than what this side kicks it right now. Yeah, it makes it easier. If I can if I can do my job, bring the ball to ground, even mark it, just give give the ball to Birch, uh, Hodgie, even, even Sam Mitchell now down on the halfback line, it just makes our, our job a lot easier. But their ability to hit targets and, and take risks, is, it's uh, pretty special. You've had a few coaches in your time. How does Alistair Clarkson compare? Uh, and what are his positive traits? <coughs> no negatives, yeah. all positive. Yeah, it's, it's hard. Yeah, you've only <laughs> been involved with him for, for such a, a small time, but yeah, he's been great. He's, I've compared him a little bit to, to Rocket, that he um, he can be intense come come uh, weekend time, but during the week he, he loves to have a, have a gag and muck around with the boys. Brian, when did the first call come for you to go to the interest from Hawthorne? Like, did it, and did it take you long to think about the decision to move on? Well, as soon as the season finished, I went over, over to America and, and had my holidays, and it wasn't until I, I got back that I, my manager contacted me, which was uh, sort of grand final week, um, and told me about the interest from, from Hawthorne, so he, he had sat on it for, for a little while, so I didn't know until... Um, so Grant Fonda and a little bit after that, that there's a possibility of me going to Hawthorne. And you were down there pretty early too, uh, when all the players were still on holiday. You were down at the club getting yourself ready just to start pre-season. Was that your doing or did the club really push for you to get fit early? Yeah, a bit of both. Yeah, there was, uh, did the press conference on the on the Tuesday um, when I got traded. So I was in the in the weights room just before that uh, the press conference working already. So. I had my holidays, didn't play finals, so I had a good sort of five or six weeks holiday. Um, got in there early and just did a lot of strength work, just around the knee, um, getting out as strong as possible, then stripping off a little bit of weight. And the, yeah, there's a lot of talk about your uh, condition at the yep. moment, that you're looking uh, lean and mean. Mm -hmm. uh, has that been a real focus for you in the off season? Yeah, it was a little bit weird. You, you, you get categorised as a gorilla, and then you, <laughs> you come to a club and they want you to strip you down a little bit. Of, Turned into a little bit of a monkey now. Just, <laughs> the lash has fallen off. But yeah, it's not just uh, obviously a loss of a fair bit of body fat, but also uh, muscle as well. That um, this day and age, uh, the games have changed. Of when I had to stand lord here, you just stand in the goal square and, and lead every now and then. Um, those times have changed. You've got to run a lot more now, which uh, requires me to take a bit of weight. After off. the show, we might get you to have a quick chat to Hutchie just to steer him in the right direction. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. looking at Big Bill there as well. But oh, oh, yeah. I used to run him around. Don't worry about that. Like, <laughs> hey, uh, Nate Brown, have a look at this. This is oh. very interesting. Uh, it's not so much analysis, just what Hawthorne did really well. Shane Munford was out last night, and Hawthorne took real control on the ruck. David Hale was terrific. Bailey was in there, but also... Jared Ruffhead went into the middle of the ground. Have a look at Jared Ruffhead going to the middle of the ground. Yeah, David Hale's ruck. Have a look at Jared Ruffhead's work here oh. in the middle of the ground to Hodge. That was the first one. He did this four times over the course of the night. This sets up Buddy's goal. It's a really good move by Arthur Clarkson, and it just it just changed up the dynamic in that in that centre square. See here, his ability because he's so big to chase after the ball was terrific, and they won the clearances 16 to five. Once again, got his starting point right. Jared Ruffhead gets it out. To Lewis again, they go forward. That was terrific. Like I said before to, uh, to Brian there, they put so much of a price on the footy and how they use it, and they're a great kicking side. And this man, Luke oh. Bruce, he was terrific last night. Have a look at how many goals he sets up because his willingness to carry the footy and always try and bring a teammate into the game. Have a look at this kick on the left, just through traffic. Sets yeah. up Buddy for his first goal of the night. Oh, Buddy, he needed this. Then the next one. He's under all sorts of pressure here, but still manages to get the handball out into open space to Max Bailey. And now this one. This is a cracking kick. Luke Bruce looks up. He's got nothing on. He sees out of the corner of his eye. He's got one player. He makes that kick. This is how good Hawthorne's kicking ability is. And then the last one. Luke Bruce again. Could have had a shot here himself. Looks in board. Was never going to have a shot. Sets up Burgoyne. And that's pretty much why Hawthorne are playing great footy right now. Their willingness to bring other players into the game and their use of the footy. Controversial goal review again last night involving Jordan Lewis. What did you make of it? Yeah, sitting down in the back line, I was, I obviously first first thought was a goal, but mm. um, yeah, what what can you say? It's uh, it's there for for a purpose, and you can say there's some teething issues at, at the moment, but <laughs> it's going to be here to stay. So what, what can you do? That's a, yeah, well, the goal umpire thought it was a goal. Called in the two boundary umpires. They thought it was touched. Went upstairs and went a long, long time. Two and minutes, 16. Thank you, Nath. And then it was given a uh, touch behind. So we couldn't work it out, really, and uh, it's got to get better than that. Uh, the coin toss. Uh, Nathan oh, yeah. brought this up before. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, 
thought this was fantastic yeah, yeah, last night. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Serious. Now that's weird enough, but then oh, you're geez. tossing the coin for your 200th <laughs> game here. And, Comes in, and I just want to. What are you thinking right here? Because you have a look, you look there, you think, What the hell is this? This is in the middle of the MCG. I was waiting for Ashton Kutcher to come out. <laughs> I thought I was getting punked. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there was a bit of a story during the rounds, and I heard it last night. When you came to Footscray, Wittenhovel, you slept in <laughs> Wittenhovel in the grandstands for the first two nights. Is this true, Brian? No, there was a, an occasion, um, probably you can't do these days, where we had a little bit of a team bonding session mm. and it was probably the first couple of weeks I was at the club. I hadn't changed my licence and uh, I couldn't quite remember where my house was that I was staying at. <laughs> so I, um, the only place I knew at that stage was uh, Witt Noble. So yeah, Joe Witt stand. Yeah, so I thought uh, I'll just get the, the cabbie just to drop me off there. And, <laughs> There we go. We well, knew we were going to be late. Yeah, yeah. We, we had an early morning uh, recovery <laughs> session as well, so it was only a, a couple of hours. I was, I was there. Um, you forgot where your house was, Brian. Yeah. Uh, well, I was only a couple of weeks. It was coming from. I was coming from Adelaide. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was down in Kiaba somewhere, um, yep. uh, which was, was probably safer being at Whitnall. Well, teammate of his, <laughs> former teammate of his, Lindsay Gilby, bought and moved into the wrong house. So that's, uh, that's how we rolled out of the dogs back in the day. The Vokes last night. I thought Luke Hodge was terrific. Jordan Rufford, uh, Jared Rufford was great too. Gibbo down back and Adam Goods was probably Sydney's best player. And the month ahead, the Hawks have got Greater Western Sydney, Gold Coast and Melbourne and the Bice, so they should get three out of those four. And Sydney play Fremantle, Collingwood, Essendon and Adelaide. That's massive. What, what are you doing? Bill? He, and he wins all the prizes and we've, we know the Lou Richards uh, prize pack, but this is for your lovely mother, Giselle. Giselle, yes. Chisel. It's Chis French. Is it? Yeah, it's French. So you're half French? No, just the name. Oh, no, I'm still Australian. But, uh, <laughs> right. Her name's French. <laughs> oh, right. So, so what is it? You're Chiselle. Chessel. Chessel. Chessel, yeah. You Chiselle, you can be fancy with Yeah, Chiselle, that's what I was trying to do. But I'll just go Chessel. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll Thanks for coming and have a great day with the family. Thank you very Brian much. Lake is in great form. Plenty to come. The Pies and their plight next on the Sunday Footy Show. Kangaroo's latest protege, Eric Wallace, the American, joins us on TAC Cup Future Stars when it returns at 1 o'clock today. We'll hear from that man, Alex Johnson, the Premiership star oh, at the Swans. That's what I'm talking about. On his journey and his ride to the grand final. Stick around from 1 o'clock today. Stephen Wells from the Cats 2 tells how Geelong built its list. Fremantle and Collingwood here on the Sunday footy show and more particularly the Magpies and their plight, Bill and team. And Lordo, it's a, a problem for the Pies now, four and three. It is, and you can see there, no goals to Travis Cloak last night, just the ten goals for the Pies, but great win from Fremantle. There's the story, 15 goals, 10. Walters continues his form with four. Main two, Silvani took some great grabs as a forward last night. Plenty of the ball for Duffield Ibbotson across half back. Barlow keeps finding the footy. Not many contributors for the Pies, but side bottom and Swan were two players that really stood out. Uh, in terms of super coach Ibbotson, uh, Ibbotson yeah, mm, he was loose, good, loose he? man. Rossi Lyon does it beautifully. Got him loose man defence. Took over ten marks. Duffield, another defender who used the ball well. Mundy didn't have his great uh, great night last night. Got tagged out of it a bit, but uh, anyway, this is the, the first quarter and Fremantle Dockers. They were just organised right from the start. This was another contentious goal review one that took a lot of time, but. Uh, they just came to play. They were harder, denied Collingwood the football, and before they knew it, it was five goals to zero. They just could not get their hands on the football. It wasn't all the stars of, um, of Frio. It was the Matty DeBoer, all these uh, lesser lights of Frio who just know their roles. And just the system, Brownie, of the Fremantle Dockers just uh, was too much. It was too much for Collingwood, and they just got jumped them from the start. And we see later on that... Uh, you know, Marty Clark, Walters got him out of the goal square. Collingwood made a, a bit of a charge, but they just had to put too much into that third quarter and they got they overrun in the end. And uh, McFarlane was sensational on cloak yeah. and Ryan Crowley did a job on Scott Pendlebury. He did. Uh, Scotty Pendlebury, every time he went near the footy, he was just smashed by three or four uh, Fremantle players. So it wasn't just Crowley, they helped him. We see here the third quarter, Dane Swan, he ignited Collingwood in this third quarter. He was sensational, had around 10 disposals, kicked a couple of goals. We see here, keeps his feet and uh, it gets back on it here, Dane Swan, and kicks a goal. But uh, Croft, they got back in it and you thought they were going to yeah, overrun did. Fremantle like Essendon did a few weeks beforehand, but it didn't happen. Yeah, they, they attacked again. I reckon they played safe, a bit like uh, Essendon did against Geelong when they hit the front. Uh, Fremantle did the same. They played safe, they chipped the ball around, they tried to play keepings off, but... Uh, to Collingwood's credit, they got themselves back into it, but then Frio just went whooshka again and got the crowd behind them. 
got momentum and were fantastic on the night. Massive moment for Ross Lyon to throw Zach Dawson into the ruck because uh, it was a masterstroke. Mm. Yeah. It was, and he was up against Quinton Lynch, and Quinton Lynch has done a bit of ruck work, and you'd think he'd be bigger and stronger, but Zach Dawson was actually jumping over the top of him, and uh, suddenly the midfield uh, you know, of Fremantle just got on top, and you know, the little fellas like Walters are there? too quick. Is he the best small forward in the game? I know Lindsay Thomas yep. has kicked the most goals, but he is he the best all small Australian. forward in the game? Definitely the all Australian. Well, I was asked this a few form. weeks back, and I said not just yet, but he just keeps doing it. He's now, I think, uh, close to 20 goals, and for uh, Lindsay Thomas yep. leads up at the footy. This guy's probably the best crummer in the game. Yeah, no doubt about that. Heath Shaw, is he in trouble, Lordo? Uh, I think... I reckon force, he should get off with the, the force. I think Ballantyne has made a bit more of it. He's not happy with where he's been hit, which is fair enough, but right. he sure felt that a Ballantyne dropped the knee Here into it is him. here. Look, there's Ballantyne just going down, and he sure just... Well, he, Ballantyne told the umpire he hit him in the, in yeah. the knackers. The audio was very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and other Freo players were really oh, critical I mean, of he sure, but I didn't think the force was uh, no, there. No, there's nothing uh, in, that. in that. But uh, I think the Got votes... The votes uh, for the game. Mickey Walters continues his four mate votes. Luke McFarlane will kept Travis Cloak goals, although Cloak had the yips. Dane Swan, seven votes, and Ibbotson controlled the defence with seven votes. In terms of the uh, next month ahead, uh, what a big game for Collingwood. Geelong, uh, Sydney, then Brisbane and Melbourne, and then the Fremantle Dockers also have a pretty good run after the Sydney Swans, so they're in a great spot. Yeah, we're going to have a look uh, and get straight into the Port Adelaide-Richmond game. And I'll tell you what, the Tigers, did they come to play? There's a the score, Port Adelaide 10-13-73, Richmond 18-6, 1-14, Revolt 5, Jakey King, Chris Newman kicked a couple, uh, Schiltz Mitchell, uh, the super sub, he was good when he came on. And there's the super coach top five, Schiltz Corns, uh, over 100, and Deledio 163, Martin Revolt. Newman, but it was all Tigers early. They were just so switched on. Push up. And uh, out of the centre, did they get it? Dustin Martin led the way through the centre. They just really teamed so well. Uh, Jack Revolt was on fire. He had three goals in the first quarter. And uh, they really isolated each other really well in their forward line, but they just worked. They just worked and worked and worked. Chris Newman, I reckon he had his best game for quite some time. He kicked two goals playing cross half back. But especially in the second and third quarters, when Port really came at Richmond, he really stood up and uh, his experience was extremely valuable and I thought he was terrific. Jack Revolt, as I said, kicked five goals. And Brett Deledio, he was the captain for the day. Had a poor one last week. Nathan Brown, mm. give it to him. But I'll tell you what, he's given it back. He was just sensational. Uh, we see uh, a beautiful goal from Knights there. But Brett Deledio, for me, 32 possessions. And just the way he went about it, he was aggressive. He really took the game on. He tucked the ball under his arm. He bounced, come through the middle, took risks, and uh, he was uh, clearly best of field. They found a player, Bill. Who? Nick Vloston. Vloston. Uh, very composed. He had 22 possessions in for his third game. But the great thing about him, he's very smart in the way he uses the footy, very composed, makes the right decisions. They've got a really good young player there. And when Port come at them, they just stood up. Oh, they found a way. Chad Wingard takes a mark in the end. But Port just can't start like they have in the last two weeks. The first, two qu uh, first quarters have been really poor. And you can't do that, especially against a side that was really switched yeah, and on. they turned the footy over a lot, Port Adelaide, yesterday. They tried to play Both. like Geelong, but just couldn't execute. Nine! Brett Deledio, nine! 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 nine. What a great number that was. Dustin ten, Martin, ten eight. Chris Newman, I thought, was fantastic. And Jack Revolt, uh, seven. He had five goals. And the month ahead, Port have got... Carlton, Geelong, the Bulldogs and the bye, and Richmond, Melbourne, Essendon, and the West Coast Eagles and the bye. Nice. <laughs>Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. Time now for the Sunday Yarn. This week, Ted Richards, the Swans Premiership defender, has been kind enough to drift in for a chat about his journey in footy. Welcome to the program. Thanks, Hutchie. Now, we'll leave last night aside. Disappointing loss, and we don't tend to deal with wins and losses here on the Sunday. And we'd love to get into your story. And I want to take you back to the start, almost. It was only eight years ago that you and your best mate, Joe Watson, are both playing in the reserves at Essendon. Yeah. And then less than a decade on, you're a premiership player in the same week that he's a Brownlow medalist. Did you ever think, think that the two of you would end up where you have? No, it, Joe and I, used to, we, we used to drive into training together at Essendon and in the car we'd talk about uh, who's in and who, who's out. And um, more often than not, we'd be, we'd be uh, making our way to you know, Bendigo to play up there. And um, yeah, 2005, at the end of that season, I decided to move to Sydney. And um, I guess... It, um, both our careers have, have moved on, on from there, so uh, 
away from each other, we seem to do better than t together. Remarkable parallel stories, and both of you had your finest football moment in the same week. That your your journey was an even tougher one. You even when you got to Sydney, it didn't work out so well for you. In fact, you're playing reserves yep. two, three, four years in. Did you ever think that your career was over? Yeah, um, probably m more so in in 2010. Um, I spent it quite a while in the reserves there, and um, I thought that was going to be my last year of um, AFL football here. Teddy, I'll never forget that uh, 2005, we're in Las Vegas on a footy yeah, trip, yeah. and you walked into my room and you said, Lordy, I need to move away from Essendon. It must have been a tough decision, and uh, why did you choose the Sydney Swans? Um, yeah, I, I, um, I guess I went to, to most of the, the senior players at the club and, and to, re to really let them know what I was thinking, and... Um, uh, I, I thought um, as much as I was enjoying my time at Essendon, it, it wasn't where I, I, I saw, uh, I guess, uh, me, yeah, yeah, my future. So um, um, I'd met with the, with the Swans and um, I, initially I had no interest in, in moving into state. I was in my comfort zone down mm -hmm. in Victoria, I had my family and friends mm -hmm. down here and um, I went up there and met all the coaches saw the SCG and I thought, you know what, well, if I'm going to make a fresh start, let's do it properly. Let's move into state, let's do this. And um, I think I was 22 at the time and um, it was one of the best decisions of my life. Do you think that the coaches and the way that they'd made you work hard for your spots was looking back the right thing? Like, was Sheets too tough on you? Was uh, Rusey too tough on you in the early days? Or, or... No, 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 no not, not at all. Um, a, an attraction to Sydney. I, I, at Essendon, I'd, I'd been forward and back, forward and back. And uh, when I went... When I went to Sydney, Paul Roos said to me, if you're willing to work hard and um, we've got a position in this team for you. So I, I kind of, I went there with direction as to a, 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 a spot in the team that I wanted. Funnily enough, it was forward. You know, I, I wanted to be working alongside Barry Hall and, and Michael O'Loughlin. And um, that was the case for the first few years Then I moved into defence. Hutchie touched on uh, you know, your move to the Sydney Swans and, and in 2010 you, you were in the twos for eight weeks and yeah. they offered you a one-year contract. Do you just think they gave you that as backup at the time, just for a backup and they probably didn't think you were going to be the player you've become? Yeah, so 2010, oh, yeah, I was yeah. eight weeks in the resis yeah. and I, I thought the career was over and when the club came to me and said, we're willing to offer you another yeah. one-year deal, you know, I, I jumped at it. Yeah. Um, and... Um, signed on and because um, you know I still had an incredible passion to play, keep playing and um, what, did, what did you do though how did you turn it around from there that is a low point 27 playing in the reserves yeah. in, a, in an unfamiliar competition in the Sydney system yeah what, what did you do to turn yourself into an elite player um, oh, I don't think it was one thing in particular uh, I, I just um, did, did you start studying defenders I read that, yeah, yeah. So I, I did that more at the, at the end of the season so I I, I in season, I think players can just be so week to week and just worried about the next game, the next opponent. And the end of the 2010 season, I thought, well, I kind of looked at myself and my whole career and how I want to be seen as a, a defender. And I looked at the you know the best defenders at the time and talking people like Glass, um, Rutten, um, um, you know, really really big big guys. And, and I thought, well. I want to be that big key and a half back. I'm, I'm going to get some more size on here, and I want to be able to try and outmark my opponents like these guys do. So I, um, instead of, um, instead of, I guess focusing on in the off season about trying to run my best 3k time trial or, or something like that, I, I thought, well, let's get some weight on. My 3k time trial might take a hit, but I think it'll be good for my football and to get some size on. Teddy, last year, outstanding year, All-Australian, uh, grand final. Uh, you play on Buddy Franklin, the biggest day of all. But such a serious injury for you in the preliminary final. Damaged your ankle really badly. How close was it that you weren't going to play that day? And, and what did you have to do to get there? Yeah, I, I was just incredibly nervous because uh, I, I couldn't test it out throughout the week. I, I couldn't even really... I couldn't even train. And um, I was initially paranoid that I'd run out there and do an injury in the first few minutes and have to get subbed out and yeah, if we were to lose, it was like, why did, why did I play? Did John Longmire say to you, I'll give you till the last minute or was there any chance at all that he was going to rule you out? Well, the, the club, to the credit of the club doctor and the club physio, they, they were great. They said, well, you know, we can jab it up throughout the game yeah. and we can really strap this up to make it tight and um, we'll do it every quarter and um, 
we reckon that'll be able to get it through the game. And um, so he injected on the day. Yeah, pre-game and then every every break, just um, and you know, so it, it got me through the game. But you know, there was that oh, there was that worry about yeah. will I be able to get through the game, and then mm. also there was the worry that well, hang on, I'm not going to be able to. I'm not going to be able to turn here and I'm playing yeah. on one of the most agile players in the comp. And there was people who saw you at the grand final parade on the Friday and they said you were hobbling that badly. They, they didn't think you'd play that day. Oh, mm. no, no. I, I was, I was, I was going to play, yeah. yeah um, but um, on that day I didn't have any uh, medical help, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what do you do when you're playing on the biggest star in the game and you know you're, you're injured? What was your attitude on the day? Did you try and avoid turning? Did, how, much, oh. how painful was it? Like, t take us through the memories of the day. Um, uh, well, I, something that was, became up in the game was that local was only kind of good for about 20 minutes. So it was to, the last 10 minutes of each quarter it kind of got quite painful. So um, um, fellow defenders tried to help me out where they could and, and throughout the day, the, day, the day they did. But... Um, um, uh, I, best day I, of your life? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, it was the best yeah. day of my life. And um, yeah, here I am, you know, talking about you know how sore it was. And then at the end of the day, you see me jumping around, you know, yeah. going crazy. So must have been okay to do that. Teddy, you're studying a Bachelor of Commerce. You've uh, you worked part time in the I've, banking. I've, I've finished the Bachelor, bachelor now. Yeah, of Commerce, yeah. and also you're studying your Master in yeah. Finance. So yeah. do you plan to stay in Sydney? And, and will you have any role in football? You think after you retire? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I, um, I start a new job in, in two weeks. Um, I've been working at Citibank the last few years and um, I, I think it, for me, I, I play my best footy when I'm busy and I'm not thinking too much about footy. Um, so, um, yeah, I've got that and I think I want to stay in Sydney once footy finishes. When I moved up there, I thought, no, nah, I'll, I'll get back to Melbourne as soon as I can to, to be with the family, but no, I love it up there now. Well, well done. It's a great footy story. Your achievements as a 30-year-old now and a premiership player, we thought it was a great opportunity to get you in and talk about it. And congratulations for all your achievements and good luck for the year here for the Swans. Thanks, Hutchie. Thanks, Lordy. Ted Richards joins us. Oh, well done, Ted. All's now, mate. Uh, your lovely mother. I see her down at Lawn a couple of times. <laughs> good sort. Now, <laughs> now uh, I'm sure you'd want to say Happy Mother's Day and give those flowers Thanks. to her. Happy Mother's Day, Mum. Um, took you out for breakfast this morning, and uh, sorry I didn't get you anything apart from the breakfast. But uh, I'll, here are these flowers for you. <laughs> Same from you. Yeah. Happy watching. There yeah. you go. Ted Richards joining us. Thanks, Bill, for that. That's on all right. Sunday Thanks, yarn. Plenty more to come. This is the Sunday Footy Show. Hoping for Jones. No, oh, no. Oh, oh. Huge break. That's a big mark. One against two. Have a look at the lead. Coming off five losses in a row, the dogs, I can sense this is their moment. Oh! Jones! Huge lead, but he's been paid him. The big chest hanger again. There we go. That was some of the Life Broker marks of the year. Contenders get online and vote for your chance to win a couple hundred dollars thanks to Life Broker. Happy Mother's Day to Beck and Amy too. Time now for the Life Broker Sunday Agenda. The big interview with Peter Jackson. Here's Damien Barrett. Thanks, Hutch. We heard from Peter Jackson before, unable to guarantee the future of Mark Neild. Now on his agenda, the captain, Jack Trengove, the president, Don McClarty, and also looming financial problems for the Demons. Are you able to prioritise the problems that Melbourne's got? I think there are a few priorities, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're facing an operating loss this year of a million dollars. Um, we, yeah, there's some one-offs and abnormals the AFL fine, the legal fees associated with that, the change of CEO that, that point that loss further north. Um, I'm not that worried about that this year because we can fund it. Um, but all other things being equal, moving into 2014, you know, we're not, we're not going to get a lot of new revenues on board. You know, we're, we're not necessarily a club people want to rush to, including members at the moment. They're sitting back in judgment and I respect that. Um, but so we're going to ha we, we can't go forward with the, with the you know the possibility of another million dollar operating loss. It's just not we can't do that. Is Don McClay the right person to be president? Don's a, 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 a great guy. He's done a lot of great work for this footy club. He inherited a, a very difficult situation with Jim's passing. Um, you know, between Don and I, we'll work together over the next six months. And uh, you know, I, I think the issue for this footy club goes beyond that sort of question, Damien. I think it's more about how we structure, how we do business. 
The co-captaincy arrangement of this footy club with two very young players who had um, not much time in the game before they were given the job. Yeah. And, and what, how it's unfolded, um, you know what's happened. Was it the right call and is it a call you're oh. going to maintain? That's, for, that, for this that's, year one of those, that's one of those things that, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to avoid your question, but after six days, I, I can't make a, a full assessment whether that was, you know, they're the best leaders for this footy club. They, they, it is where it is. You know footy clubs though, you know successful footy clubs. Yeah, but one of the things we're missing, I think, as a, as a playing group is, is that obvious, more senior leadership stru uh, structure. And, and my understanding is that the players thought those guys uh, had the, the right values and behaviour system to be their leaders. Now, is it putting too much pressure on them as young kids? Maybe. Um, but we, we, we'll have to assess that as we go forward. Uh, it, to me, that particular question is not the most important issue in the footy team right now. It's something that we'll look and consider at, but we've got to, we've got to get our focus more broadly on footy, I think. One of those co-captains, Jack Trengove, has had a very difficult season, not least of all because of the linking of him to the anti-obesity drug under the, the WADA investigation. How's he coping? I, I refuse to believe that something like that cannot affect players. If, if you've got the, if you've got the um, you know, group dynamics and support and maturity that, say, an Essendon footy club list has got, um, you can understand how they bond together and they're, they're getting fantastic results. But when you've got a, an inexperienced, younger footy department of playing list who, you know, a lot of these kids that are, that are with Melbourne now don't even, ha haven't experienced what a, what a great footy environment is, have they? I mean, it's, it's all, to them, this is the norm. Um, and we're asking them to deal with it and show leadership. I mean, I think it, we need to support them as much as we can. You know, I, I talk about where we're going as a club and I think we've got to earn back respect. There's no doubt about that. We, we're not respected by the AFL, we're not respected by our club peers, uh, we're, we're not respected generally by the footy public. Um, I think we're probably not respected by our members and supporters, really. Mm. Wow, that's emphatic from Peter Jackson. Oof. Lack of respect, uh, he says, Oof. imminent in the Melbourne footy club. It's everywhere at the moment and more on that through the course of the week. Brisbane and the West Coast Eagles. The Lions were gallant. Eagles got it done though, Nath, and the Lions are in a wall of pain. Yeah, they are at the moment. Uh, Buick kicked a couple, Golby Brown. Rockliffe was very good. Hanley was good. Kicked his first goal in his career. Kennedy kicked four. It was the difference. Mark McCrae kicked three. As we see, Hearn, Selwood, Glass, Nat Nguyen, Prittis. Rockliffe, 153. Hanley, 133. And Lewenberger gets better and better. But Brisbane Lions played some really good footy. West Coast Eagles just got the job done. They went up there, all they needed to do was win the game because I think West Coast are still three, possibly even four weeks away from having their best team out on the track. And I think in the second half of the year, we're going to see the proper West Coast Eagles. But the Lions, they had more inside 50s, they had 64 more touches, and their run and spread and their uncontested possessions on the outside really bothered West Coast. But where it was won and lost was at either end of the ground. Every time they went in, they had guys like McKenzie uh, putting on all Ooh. sorts of pressure on. Every time West Coast went in up the other end, it was almost like they kicked a goal every time. The last 10 minutes of the game, 10 inside 50, six goals, two to nothing. That was the sealer. And uh, they had no more answers, Brisbane Lions, after that. But West Coast Eagles, as I said, they're just tracking along nicely. They're three and four at the moment. And they got a big game against the Kangaroos next week. Lacrasse starting to play some good footy. Kennedy kicked four. He was probably just about the most outstanding forward on the ground. And Prittis finished with 29 disposals and did his job. Had a look at the votes. Kennedy, I Ooh. thought, was terrific. Rockliffe was a standout for the Lions. Selwood and Pierce Hanley kicked a couple to go with his 31 touches. Brisbane Lions got the Bombers. Carlton and Collingwood doesn't get any easier for them. West Coast, big game Friday night against the Kangaroos mm. are in form. Western Sydney, Richmond and St Kilda. And there you go, that's the plight of the Lions and the Eagles. The Cats had a big win on Friday night, Bill. We'll get the scores up for you because you complain when we're going to drop them. Stevie oh. J, 36. We know we got your votes. Let's not kid uh, ourselves. Uh, 53,000 people there, <laughs> full house. Really good game. Why Essendon didn't pick uh, Patrick Ryder? That is a question. Uh, the Cats really good. They did kick themselves out of it in that third quarter. Essendon kicking one goal nine. The mm. Cats, six goals, two there. Stevie was good. Joe Watson, Zara Arcus, outstanding. First quarter had 13. Carlisle had the better of Hawkins and Enright Bartell. A Motlop outstanding. There's the votes. Hamish Hartley. Oh, oh, oh crikey. I'll tell you who I gave him to. Stevie Johnson. It oh, wasn't we, Hamish Hartley. Rowie right. upstairs. Come on, Rowie. It Rowie. was uh, <laughs> Stephen Johnson, Stephen Motlop, uh, Matty Stokes 
and Tommy Lonigan. And Tommy Lonigan, exactly, who did a fantastic job. There it is, the Lou Richards medal there's there. There's the leaderboard oh. with both leading Watson, Harlot and Jeez. Stevie J, the big mover after Bill's votes. Matty Campbell's with us from sportsbed.com.au. Yes, Hutchie, yeah, three games this afternoon. Adelaide, very short price favourite up against the Giants. We won't worry about that game too much. But the most intriguing betting game has been the Gold Coast Suns for the third week in a row. They've been really well back. They're in from $2.05 to $1.77. Melbourne, the outsiders on their home deck, oh. now at $2.10. Can you believe that? Oh. No money for St Kilda. They're at $4.10. It's all about Carlton on Monday night at the $1.25. Ablett's the man today, so we've got a market on Ablett Disposals. If he has a quiet one, you might pick up $4.25. Oh. 32 to 34 the most popular at $3. And also, if he has a blinder, you can pick up $3.25. And our Sunday footy show, Megabet. Yep. Small forward, so important. And the three amigos at Carlton. If Betts, Yaron and Garlic can kick 10 goals between them, $3.50. All the terms and conditions and the details on your mobile device, Hutchie. That's a good one. That's a beauty. Get on your yeah. phone oh, at sportsbet.com.au. TAC Cup feature star still to come. I'm off to do that. Nathan Brown returns with a handball next. The player crowned champion on Lou's handball for season 2013 will receive $10,000 cash with $5,000 going to the runner-up thanks to our great mates at Carry Boy. And each week, the top handballer will take home $500 cash and the runner-up pocketing a tidy $250. That's over $35,000 worth of prizes courtesy of the Sunday Footy Show and Carry Boy. Carry Boy, Australia's leading canopy and 4x4 accessories company. For more details and to check out their product range, visit carryboy.com.au. Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show. Time for Lou's handball. Hello to you, Lou. Bill, Hello. who we got playing today? Uh, Teddy Richards from Sydney and Michael Hibbert, who's been very good off the halfback oh, for the Essendon Footy Club. One went to Frankston High, one went to Xavier College. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a battle, but also they're using the pink balls today. And, of course, we're raising awareness and funds for the Breast Cancer Network Australia. Oh, yes. And this weekend there'll be over 950 sporting clubs will turn pink and use the pink footies for Breast Cancer Network, Australia's pink sports day. So well done out there. A very, very good cause. And uh, Ted, thanks for being on the show. You enjoyed it? Yep. Well Hopefully done, I have a win now. Yeah, well done. <laughs> and uh, also your good self, uh, Hibbo, you've been really good, mate. And you take something out of Friday night's loss to the Cats. Yeah, a few positives, you know. Kick straight in the third quarter. It might have been a different story, but they're a good team. And, yeah, and your betters. beautiful mother, Cheryl, is watching at home. You want to send her a message? Happy Mother's Day, Mum. I actually haven't got her a present, so oh, hopefully this is now. enough. Take home one of the pink balls. <laughs> yeah, I'll give go. her one of these. Right, oh, good work. <laughs> Ted's. Uh, no, oh, Hibbo. Hibbo won the toss, did he? Yeah. Right, oh, you're away. Right. Five on the left, five on the right. Here we go. Five hundred dollars thanks to Sports Boy to the winner. Two fifty to the runner-up. Five. Five. Seven. Which will be twelve. Seven. <laughs> Nineteen. <laughs> Oh, no. oh. Seven. Oh, was that a flipper? Twenty-six. Carry boy. Seven. Thirty-three. That it's, it? it's yeah, that's it. Thirty-three. Righto, you're up. Uh, Tettles. Carry boy. Seven. Seven. Oh. Oh. Excellent. Seven. Fourteen. Very good. Very. Seven. Twenty-one. Very composed. Isn't very, it? very uh, composed. Catch it. Oh. Oh. Twenty-one. Two to go on the left. Seven. Twenty-eight. Thirty. It's all right, I'll get them. 28, you get them, Wayne. <laughs> Don't worry about me. That's five. Oh. That's 33 apiece here, right on. Other hand, thanks, him. It's, 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 it's very, very close. It's the ring a ding ding, as uh, the great Lou Richards would say. 40. 47. 47. Oh, 52. 59. Oh. Wonder Cup. Oh. 66. So he's gone 33 and 33, which is? Clickety clicks. 66. Yeah. Well done, John. Right on, here we go, Tettles. Seven. Oh, that is a four tie. Seven. Forty-seven. Oh, shit. Get out of the road, Shane. Oh, you pick the balls up, Bill. <laughs> oh, Fifty-seven. He's cracked them, Wainers. Seven. Oh, hang on. Sixty-four. Sixty-six. You just got to hit the board, Ted. So oh, Ted's our winner. Now it's Carry Boy Brownie. I think you said Sports Boy before. Carry oh, Boy. Oh, it's you, Bill. Canopies and accessories. Five hundred bucks goes to Ted. 250 to Hibbo. Thank you very much, boys. Uh, very good of you. And we've got the St Kilda jumper. Have a look at this. Bang. Oh, Hold that out. That and one. have a look at this one. This is the jumper the Saints will wear tomorrow night, of course. And all the senior players that have played one game are on that jumper, including 
Mick Mouldhouse, who Mick Mouldhouse. Uh, yeah, will be the coach, of course, of the opposition side. So, way back in uh, 1873, they started 140 years ago. Well done, Saints. Well done, Saints. It's been a big show today. Footy Classified's got the week off this week. Thursday, all new time at 8.30. TAC Cup Future Stars is back up next. Have a great Mother's Day. Who's hosting it? Hachi. Hachi!